right up on a on a roof, um, pumping down these two units. Uh, let's get a few of them. Uh, five horsepower, press cold. And then that one's got a Tecumseh compressor on there that I fitted a while ago. Because these are these CRNQ compressors, some of them are obsolete. Well, if you can get one, it comes out with stubs and not rotor locks. And um, <coughs> by the time you've put the adapters on, you've got to alter the pipework anyway. Uh, and don't particularly, I'm not impressed with these compressors. Um, well, that might be down more to who put them in originally rather than the thing themselves, but I quite rate these things. One made in France. There you go. Anyway, oh, this one's made, might be made in Germany. GmbH. Anyway, I've got the receiver valve shut. Um, <coughs> I shut that in just to see what it was doing, but it's uh, it's um, trying to pump it down, and that's as low as it's gone. So it's, it's, it's probably off on the LP switch. And these work, you've got a little bellows here and here. That's your high pressure one, that's your low pressure one. That's normally closed, and that one's normally open. So pressure on that one going up will make the switch open, pressure on this one going up will make the switch close. Um, and if you can if you can get in there and work out how it works, you can usually either lever it with a screwdriver or work out where it pushes. And this this pushes here and levers this bit over here, so we can push that over and make it run. bearings going in that motor. Bear in mind that is with the suction valve shut and that is a five horsepower compressor. Just just pulling out of its own shell which most of that is full of motor and compressor so I would say um, we've got some bad valves or something in there. Well, I've got that as low as that's going to go. It's always worth shutting the high side valve on these. Otherwise, especially one with a bad valve on it, otherwise the um, compressor's going to fill up with um, liquid that come back out of the condenser. They're a nightmare to put back in again. I would usually degas these completely and put it in a recovery bottle so they're empty. This is being bought by another company. Um, but they are 22 costing £30 a kilo. They're not going to want to buy 10 kilos of the gas. Um, to put it in back, you know, where it goes. I don't know if you can hear. Every now and again you hear a noise in the oil. Sort of. Yeah, so not very happy. 
this this one that's the same way this one died a couple of years ago bad valves I've been out to this before um, and found the dryers were blocked up um, and the previous company had just gone by the side glass seen bubbles in there and just dumped more gas in there um, that's what it was a blocked dryer so I think running seriously overcharged with a block dryer doesn't do them a lot of good. Right. right, I've got to cover off the uh, switch on this one. This one is um obviously white I think. HP is on this side and the LP is on this side. Now that's something to be very aware of if you're changing these for different makes on models. If you just put the hoses on in the same place you can end up with a high pressure going to the low pressure and vice versa and none of the safeties will do what they should do. Well, I have seen that done. So that's something to be aware of. Anyway, um, we nearly... I've left the blue line on there and shut the tap. We've put the high side line on there. Got two taps in on the gauges so I can read the pressure in this one on both the gauges. And we're nearly down to zero. Anyway, so I'll Turn that on if you watch, so I expect that will trip in a minute. That's not already done. I think we've got a time delay on this one. Yeah. So if you just saw that, pop down. That's it, and if you were to get a screwdriver in here, It's switching. I would say the diff is set too close on this. This should be really sort of um, some one bar, 15 psi, and you'd probably run it at 40, something 40 psi. Maybe for you know maybe 30 on the diff, so it's cutting out about 10. Because the high temp, it's going to run around sort of minus five, evaporating the lowest temperature really. So there's plenty. Don't need to pump it down into a vacuum. This is a R404 compressor, but it'll run fine on 22. In them. There we go, we just took the last bit of vapour out. So that's um, both of them pumped down. And we'll shut the, turn the switch off, we don't want it starting up again. To uh, shut the valves, shut that valve in, take gauges off, shut that valve in, and then cut the pipe work um, anywhere nice and easy and raise it up. Take the cable in out. And then they're ready to go. I don't think, I don't think they're bolted down up here. Oh, they've got some screws. We'll take the screws out. Um, they hold 7 kilos, so that'll be 14 kilos between the two, so that'll cost a lot to replace. 